let's let's talk about these will it slip type problems. Um, I used to not have this page in here, but I've given enough of these, not every semester, but I do kind of like these, to these problems on the test. I like to give you kind of a roadmap for how I do these problems. Okay. You don't actually have to do them exactly how I do them. There are different ways, but my way will always work. And my way is a lot easier, especially if it does start slipping. I don't have to redo everything. I don't have to go all the way back to the beginning. Whereas you could do this a few ways. You could test out the maximum. But then if it starts slipping, if you do it a different way, you might have to redo the entire problem from start to finish. But anyway, uh, for these problems where you don't know whether it's slipping or not, right? You don't know whether it's sliding or moving together, or maybe it's not even sliding up. Maybe it's just stationary at all, but you don't know. Um, and especially a red flag, at least in this class, if you're given both the mu s and the mu k, you know, then that, that might be one of those will it slip type problems. So I like to start by, I like to assume it will not slip. Assume it will not slip. Okay. And so I work out the problem assuming that it will not slip. If it is not slipping, I set the force of friction just to FF. All right. I just set the force of friction to FF. But the acceleration, I'm going to put a check mark right there for the acceleration because many times that means acceleration is zero or in the, the problem we're going to go back to, that means, means the acceleration of B is equal to the acceleration of A if they're not slipping past each other. So you kind of know something about the acceleration. So let's put know something. And then solve for the force of friction. This will be the force of friction required to not slip, right? That's the force of friction that makes your assumption correct, all right? And then just ask yourself, is this force of friction possible? Because you know that the maximum, it, it can only get up to mu s times n. So if it's less than the maximum, then sure, that's perfectly possible. If your force of friction that you calculate that's required to keep it from not slipping is less than the maximum, then it's possible. Your assumption was correct. You're, you're done with the problem. You know, whatever you solved for in part one, you're, you're done. Okay, but if the force of friction is greater than the maximum, then that can't happen, right? That's impossible. Uh, our assumption was incorrect. It will slip. Okay, so now you've got to rework the problem knowing that it is slipping. Rework the problem. knowing it is slipping. So if you know it is slipping, then, then what? The force of friction is mu k times n, but now the acceleration uh, might be a little bit harder. So do you see in, the, in that first, if you assume, all right, up here, if you assume it is not slipping, you don't know force of friction, but you do know the acceleration. But when you know it, is slipping, you do know force of friction, you don't know acceleration. You're, you're trading one unknown out for another. So I'll caution you. You can reuse many of the equations, as many equations as you can, that you did in part one. Okay? The sum of the forces in Y, maybe that equation is exactly the same. You know, you wrote the sum of the forces in X. Just, just look at that equation that you wrote and ask yourself, how is that equation different? Maybe you don't have to re, don't reinvent the wheel. Just rework the problem. Go back to part one that you did. Go back to those equations and now ask yourself, okay, now that I know it's slipping, how is that equation different? And it might be the same. Rework the problem, knowing it's slipping, then you, you can solve for the acceleration.